Hi, and welcome along in this session. I want to look at the difference between a physical network and a logical network. So what we see here is four computers connected to the same physical device. Well, at least we see a depiction of that anyway, don't we? So this physical device being a switch, 24 port switch, these physical devices being computers. So there's our tower computer with a network connection down the bottom. So here is the question. If I have these four computers all connected to the same physical switch, they're effectively all part of the same physical network. Just because they're com connected to the same physical network, does that mean they can automatically communicate with each other? Give you a few seconds to think about it. You might be thinking, absolutely, if they're connected to the same physical network, yes, they can communicate. Well, yes, they should be able to communicate. And we're assuming that all the cables are working and everything else is working. There is more involved than that. Not only do you need to be part of the same physical network to communicate, you also need to be part of the same logical network. So what do I mean by logical network? Well, let me just hover over one of these computers and you can see it's showing port fast ethernet zero up and that's where it says link. The link is showing is up. IP address not set. IPv6 address not set. What I'm interested in here is the IP address that is not set. What I want to do is I want to go through the process of setting some IP addresses on each of these computers. And what I'm going to do is on PC2 and PC3, I'm going to set them to be on the same logical network. And PC4 and PC5, I'm going to put them on a separate logical network. One nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot one, and on this one I will use config Ethernet one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot two. Okay, now on PC four I'm going to go fast Ethernet one nine two dot one six eight dot twenty dot one. And on this one, I'm going to go 192.168.20.2. So now when I hover over PC2, you can see 192.168.10.1. And PC3, 192.168.10.2. PC4, 20.1. PC5, 20.2. So what I've done is I've put these two on one logical network and I've put these two on a separate logical network. The logical network is based on the combination of IP address and subnet mask. So this is my IP address here and this is my subnet mask. In simple terms, the subnet mask determines what portion of the IP address represents the logical network and what portion of the IP address represents the unique identity on that logical network. Often we refer to this as the network identifier and the unique portion as the host identifier. For two computers to be able to connect, the network portion of their IP address must be the same, and the host portion of their IP address must be unique. Now, as I said before, it's the subnet mask that determines which portion of your IP address is network and which portion of your IP address is host. In the most simple format, where the subnet mask is 255s, the corresponding portions of the IP address are network. Where the subnet mask is zeros, the corresponding portion of the IP address 
his host or the unique portion. So in this case, 192.168.10.255.255.255.0. So the first three sections of the IP address represent network or the logical network. See, three lots of 255. The last section of the IP address, where the subnet mask is zero, represents host or the unique portion. So what you might say is, this is computer number two on the 192.168.10 network. If I come over here, this is computer number one on the 192.168.10 network. So let me test that. What I want to do is I want to open up PC3, I'm going to go to the desktop, I'm going to open a command prompt, and I'm going to go ping 192.168.10.1, which is PC2. And I'm getting four successful replies. Let's make that a little bit wider. Right, now over here, PC4, PC4, 255.255.255.0 is a subnet mask. So the first three parts of the IP address represent the logical network. So as you can see, PC4 is on the 192.168.20 logical network. It is computer number one on that network. Now, the 192.168.20 network is different from the 192.168.10 network. So when I try and ping 192.168.20.1, so I'm trying to ping from PC3 to PC4, it fails. Fail once, fail twice. Similarly, if I was to try and ping 192.168.20.2, which is PC5, it will also fail. So let me just do that. And there you can see that failing. Because PC3 is on the 192.168.10 network, and PCs 4 and 5 are on the 192.168.20 network, or should I say logical networks. They're all on the same physical network. They're all physically connected to the same central device. But their logical networks, which is determined by what we call their IP address, internet protocol addresses, are different. PC2 and 3 are on the same, 192.168.10 logical network. PC4 and 5 are on the same, 192.168.20 logical network. 2 and 3 will be able to communicate. Four and five will be able to communicate, but you won't be able to communicate between logical networks. To communicate between different logical networks, you require more than a switch, you require a router. So let me try going to PC5, which is 192.168.20.2, and from here, command prompt, ping 192.168.20.1 and you can see that's succeeding whereas if I try and ping 192.168.10.1 it will fail because it's a different logical network. I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to point out local area networks, wireless local area networks, wide area networks, they're all physical type options. But I did want to point out with your IP address and subnet mask, it determines logical networks. And it's logical because it can be easily changed. I can come in here, I can go to my configuration, I can select my network adapter, and I can change the IP address if I want. Okay, it's a logical network determination. Right, I hope that's been beneficial. Thanks very much for watching.